Hey everybody, James here from My RV Ninja. That's right, I'm your RV Ninja at MyRVNinja.com. Hey, you probably can't tell by the video, but it's actually a little cold here where we live in Wilmington. My family loves to have me, well, let me, let me back up. I like to, being a Florida boy, uh, I like to have a fire anytime it gets below pretty much 60. So today I had a reason to do that because it was in the 40s anyway. Um, I know you can't tell because it's all warmed up now and I'm in my trusty t-shirt here, but I wanted to do a quick video for you about something that I've seen come up a lot, something to be aware of. I know a lot of you out there are not yet an RV buyer, <clears throat> excuse me, and or an RV owner, but there are a lot of you out there that are. And so I thought uh, there's one thing that it made me think of here as the, as the weather got colder and it's of course about winterizing. Guys, there is... Um, if you are basically below Virginia south till around you get over to Texas area, you don't have, you know, in the southeast, you don't really have a whole lot of emphasis on winterizing. Why? Because it doesn't get cold enough to do some damage to your coach. Um, I would say, though, that as you have learned, no doubt, from these past few years, you know, weather is very unpredictable. So it's not necessarily a bad thing to go ahead and winterize your coach if you're not going to be using it especially if it's not going to be inside in a climate controlled environment even when it does get a little colder listen i've been in parts of georgia and in north carolina um just blew me away almost literally at how cold it got there uh so something to think about if you don't have well i mean let me back up the first thing you should do if you're going to buy an RV or if you're in an RV, is follow the guidelines of the manufacturer for winterizing. There's a lot of good information out there, but there's also a lot of bad information out there when it comes to winterizing your specific coach. Um, you're gonna winterize a little differently. I know there's just more tanks involved in, in some cases versus a smaller travel trailer or a larger motorhome. Uh, there's certain procedures that will um, well, think about the warranty. That'll void the warranty if you don't follow them correctly when it comes to winterizing. If you don't have any idea where to get started or if you'd like a good res uh, resource for you on how to winterize your coach, feel free to reach out to me and to message me. Go to our Facebook page at RV Community. Um, anything at all, email me. Feel free to even call me because I'm here to help you uh, with that scenario. There's some really good information out there, but there's also some that I would be uh, weary of so just something to think about as it get cold as it gets colder be thinking about this before you go out and buy your RV and you head out west or head north because you're trying to uh, experience the world uh, make sure that you are prepared to winterize your coach if you're not going to be using it even if you are using it I would also say that there are certain hacks out there that people will tell you to do um, we're going to talk uh, on our next video later this week on some things to think about uh, and, um, you know, some mistakes that have been made by some people trying to avoid having to go through the whole winterizing process uh, by doing certain things to the pipes and to their rig, and it ended up being disastrous. So that's going to be on our next video. Hope uh, all is well and that you're enjoying the RV life. If there's anything I can do for you, feel free to reach out. And uh, in the meanwhile, God bless and have a great day RVing out there. Take care.